Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm this full of goats here and today I've got a new take on the Trout Brigade deck. Today I decided to try to splash the Trout Brigade engine with the Adventure package. The theory of this being that both Trout Brigade and Adventure have one card that can do the entire combo. If you open Fractal for Trout Brigade you can pretty much get the full combo and if you open Enchantress or Right, you can do the full Adventure combo. So my theory was you could play these two engines and a ton of hand traps and I worked okay, I went two and two. Um, there's some tunes I would make if I did the tech again, but uh, let's give it a look, shall we? So for the try engine, it's we're playing we're playing all we're playing all nine tries. So nine, so three never all, three keras, three kit, and three fractal. Again, this is mostly because of how much space I had in the deck. And I figured if you have nine of them, you can do the combo, which you know fractal into kit into never all into keras three times, and get multiple um, links out to have the turn. And to complement and complementing these, we have the one revolt, triple tanky, the one foolish, and the one one for one. Uh, so with all these cards, so this obviously is our combo, a play of the opponent's turn, which we let's make Shirag. Um, these these are three more fractals. This is one more never all, and this is one more kit or never all. So with all these, you've got a very consistent engine, and this also helps us get another little engine I put in this deck. And that's the Tri Brigade section of the deck. The Adventure engine is very standard. One Griffin, one Adventure, one Draco back, three Rites, and three Enchantress. Now, if I was playing this again, I think I would up the Griffin Riders to two, because Griffin Rider is a winged beast. So, even if you just hard draw it, you can just special summon it first, play a Tri Brigade, and then do, your, do a link play from there. Now, one thing I would like to address here is that, yes, in theory, Right of Edemisia does conflict with the Tri Brigades, because if you get stuck with the normal Summon Roll Tri Brigade, and you've played this, you can't actually go into your combo plays. But with, with the way I put this deck, that was very rare to happen. Because of the fact you have all of these ways to get the Fractal in your hand, as long as you open at least one Tri Brigade that is not Keras, which is the reason I play all uh, three copies of each of them, you can just go through the fractal line, discard the extra brigade, make grass, and start your plays from there with a negate backup from Griffin Rider. Also, one thing I want to say about this card this card can be a brick if you draw it in a bad time, but if you just draw this, it just it just lets you keep recycling your pieces and also it lets you dump um, tribe brigades that you dump that you want in the graveyard, like Never Rolling Kit. So it does have some synergy in that regard. Um, I chose not to play Illegal Knights in this deck because I wanted to have almost no darks so that the Steel couldn't hit this deck very much. But again, in the future, I might upgrade this to two Griffin Riders because this was actually really good at both a negate and link material. So that's, that, that's that engine. And for the engine I wanted to try out is the Zoo engine. So one Ram Ram, one Whip Tail, and one Thorough Blade. Uh, I decided not to play the combo on Rapier. I wanted the three ones with the biggest with the biggest stats I could find. Whip Tail is definitely the best because it makes Azuti like going first a way to bash a card so it's another interruption. These are just here to make the plays into either Zeus going second which is the most common use for these cards but going first if you have if you have a Trebi on the board you can make a massive Zodiac link as sorry Zodiac Xyz and link it off with with the Trebrigade and then you have your Trebrigade link monster and, about, and at least four targets in the grave for your future tri brigade plays. Also, the, 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 this engine was actually really good, and I would definitely keep it in in, in future builds of this deck. Okay, so then we get the hand traps for the main deck hand traps. It's you've seen these before: Imperm, Ash, Crow, and the first deck off you have a call by the grave. So with this with this ratio, this is because Bastille is still running about, and even though no one played it today, there are some tier decks in the format. Um, so there's that, although I'll be honest, I faced this camp in one game, not match, game, the entire night. I genuinely would have been better last night playing draw and lock with this, so this spot is a bit flexible depending on your meta. Uh, this is obviously to counter the opponent's hand traps, because if your if your tribal gate gets negated, like, like a veil or something, or an imperm, you're kind of stuck there, unless you can make it get a second one on board, so this is really important. And these are the best generic hand traps I, can, I could find. Again, you could possibly play Draw Lockwood or Effect Veiler if you wanted to. You could, you could probably cut the, you could cut the Zoo Engine out and play 
against three Veilers or whatever you want. I personally like the best stuff that the Zoo Engine gave us, but it is an option. And that's the main deck. For the extra deck. We haven't got an adventure token, so I'm just putting this for the adventure token. For the Link 1, Almoraj. You make this with a Ram Ram or a Never Roll if you've got nothing to do. Again, yeah, it's not ideal, but it's an option. For our Link 2s, Ram, uh, Rampit um, Bebram, Fergit, Ancient Warrior, Epi Mascarina. So uh, these are all fairly standard. Some builds play two of this. I didn't fit in if I needed to. This is a bounce. This can set up our trap from Trap to your opponent's turn. And if you haven't made it naturally, this can get you Appaloosa or Underworld Goddess in your opponent's turn. You could also play a Nightmare Unicorn to come up with this as well, which I might consider in the future. Next up for the left, for the rank three, it's just a Silver Shiller. Again, this could be a Unicorn if you want, but I like the fact that this lets you grind more. By basically, what you do is if this is still on the board when your opponent's about to end the turn, at the end of their second main phase, you activate this, bring a Neverall or a Kit back. It'll bounce back to your hand at the end of the turn, and you can keep recycling your plays with it. It also gives us ways to re-trigger Shirag effects next turn after turn. Uh, for, the ring, for the Link 4s, uh, Boral Sword, Appaloosa, and two Shirags. Um, I played two Shirags because we can grind a lot in this deck, so you want multiple ways to banish. Uh, Appaloosa, you get this with IP, or if you have extra Tri Brigades, you can make it. It's just it's usually, it's usually only two negates, but if you have if you if you get into the grind and you have multiple monsters, you can make a bigger one. You can beat over. And again, this should be access code, but I'm not buying one yet. Only rank only link five, Underworld Goddess. You make this with IP Masquerina on your opponent's turn. You can then take one of the, you can remove one of the monsters from the field and you dark roll them in their turn. Also, it strikes graveyard effects, so again things like tier elements. This can this can help you deal with. And finally, the zoo package, Hammer Kong, Chaka 9, Bobo, and Zeus. So these two are just usually names. Although again, one thing you can do is you can use Chaka 9 to get back a, uh, another Zodiac, and then you have more material for your uh, Trivigate plays. This obviously you can attack directly. So you basically go at this, attack directly, and then Zeus, and you have at least one, and you have a pop in your opponent's turn. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut this engine out, play the more generic links. Or if you wanted to up this, we could get two Zeus Pops. We could probably cut one of the Shurags, Silver Shella, or possibly IP. In fact, I think in the future I might try that, because IP is, can be a brick in this deck sometimes, because if, you, if you're forced to make Appaloosa during your opponent's turn, you may not have enough sources to make um, IP. So, sorry, if you, if you play Appaloosa during your own turn, you may not have resources with IP to make Underworld Goddess, so I meant to say. And that's the extra deck. For the side deck, one Neko Main King for two on the matchups. I, th I thought, well, you know what, man? there's no advantage of having this level one in your hand in this deck, that there was in the bird up deck, so one's enough. You never want to draw this, you want to get milled off of. Uh, for the board breakers, going second. Dark Ruler no more, in terms of all their effects. And with all, with all your bashing and bouncing, you can pretty much clear up any board for this. For the for the, for the next playing Bastilles, um, we have Super Poly Package with Styling Venom Fusion Dragon. I took this one because it just needs two darks to make. And on Destruction, it can pop um, all your points special monsters. So it's basically like our deck's Mirror Jade, in a way. And then the rest of this is just hand traps. So we got the ciphering package and the draw lock bit package. So personally, this is obviously comes in most games going second. Because you don't I don't mean to kick because you don't want to have it going first, it can be a bit of a brick. Uh, and this is what we if we play a deck that doesn't doesn't match up well against with the crow, we can take the crow out and bring this instead. This is actually really good against uh, a couple of matchups I played where they were playing earths or other or other elements like um, Adolce, um, there's one of those that are locals. I played against Leon Deris, so yeah. And that's the entire deck. So I'm going to give you guys a quick test on tonight. I'll be honest, I'm still pretty much learning this deck. 
So if I make some mistakes, I do apologize. Because it's like a good shuffle up. Also, I may not get the next script video up before Christmas. It depends on how quickly things progress. But the gold guide on Warriors will be out at some point soon. Okay, let's do a quick test hand. Kit. Griffin Rider. Vraktal. Enchantress and another Enchantress. So I'm going to start things off with Enchantress. I'm going to pitch. Also, for everyone who hasn't seen it before, we're playing as if our opponent's open to no hand traps. So we have the right, which by the way is some of the nicest arts I've seen. Uh, we're going to write to get the Fateful Adventure out and make a token. And normally what we do here we discard for adventure, but we don't need to do that right now because we have Griffin Rider in our hands. So we summon Griffin Rider. Now from this point our players are protected. Um, so from here we're going to go with the usual Trevor plays. We're going to pitch Fractal for Kit. We're going to pitch Kit for Neverall and we're going to pitch Neverall for, to get Kiras into our hand. Then we're going to pitch our kit to get us a Keras. This was special summon, so it considers the fact under the right. We're going to banish, I think we'll do Fractal and Kit. And we're going to make ourselves, we don't need Baron Blossom in this situation, so we're going to go right into Rampant Rampager. Then we're going to link off these two. And we're going to make ourselves a... And you have options here, depending on what you, what you actually open with. You can make Rugal, or you can make uh, Baron Blossom. It depends what you want. For this situation, I think we're going to go with Rugal, because he's both bigger and can give us players in the opponent's turn. That will trigger the Baron Blossom, so we can now put this at the bottom of our deck and grab ourselves a copy of Revolt. So we step the revolt and pass to our opponent's turn. On the opponent's turn, when they use an effect we don't want them to have, we use this to negate it, putting it on the bottom of the deck. We now have four zones opened up, so we, we revolt. We get back Neverall, Kit, Keras, and Fractal. And then we link them off. And we make ourselves a copy of Ominous Omen. So now we have a, a Banish, we trigger the Neverall, and from there we can grab ourselves a copy of Fractal to go off again next turn. Um, and now that's, that's two interruptions, and, during our, and we can also start recovering plays, because if Silver Shell remains in the field, we can bring back Neverall at their second main phase, it'll bounce back to hand, then during the opponent's turn, we do a crow, so we can do the Trivigate play again. Uh, special summon, uh, we can pitch this and special summon out Keras. That'll trigger this again, we get another banish. And then during our opponent's turn, we can keep bringing things back to the Rugal, triggering Shirag. If Shirag just goes, we can get a level one to our hand, so I can have another roll, for example. And yeah, that's pretty much how this deck plays at optimal speed. During the opponent's, if, we, if we're going second, you obviously you can, you can just make all in so to break the boards and then eventually finish them off with your finisher, be it dragon or access code. So yeah, that was the deck. Again, the, I, th I think Loralisk is, is the better way to play this and I'm hoping to try, try Sprite in the future. But thank you guys for watching. Have a good holiday if I don't, if I don't go before then and I'll see you guys soon.